Autoimmunity as a cause of interstitial lung disease is thought to be more common than previously recognized. Right now, figures are somewhere around 20% of patients, but as we increasingly recognize that the autoimmune process may only be manifest in the lung, that number is likely to become higher. So I think people are probably very familiar with rheumatoid arthritis, which affects up to 1% of the population in the United States. And we think about one in 10 patients with rheumatoid arthritis may have a clinically significant, but in many cases yet undiagnosed, interstitial lung disease. Other types of autoimmune or connective tissue diseases that can also affect the lung include systemic sclerosis or scleroderma, which is a less common disease, but the majority of patients with that disease have at least mild interstitial lung disease. We think about 30 to 40 percent of those patients may have clinically relevant interstitial lung disease. And then there are other less common autoimmune diseases such as autoimmune myositis and Sjogren's syndrome that may also affect uh, the lung and in fact be very important to recognize. So the major issue is recognizing that a process that sometimes seems limited to the lung and can present like the idiopathic interstitial lung diseases and even like idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is really due to an autoimmune process. So in a patient who has clinical manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis with joint deformities, we need to be aware of the incidence uh, and prevalence of interstitial lung disease and try and screen those patients. But then we also need to recognize that there are folks who don't have classic manifestations of the autoimmune disease or connective tissue disease, but can have very subtle uh, or early uh, autoimmune uh, features or only positive serologies and then a type of interstitial lung disease such as nonspecific interstitial pneumonia or organizing pneumonia that's much more commonly associated with connective tissue diseases. Now in terms of treatment, it's important uh, to understand that, the, it, that these autoimmune diseases can be highly treatable. And so that is why it is so important that the clinician recognize whether they're present or not. In addition, the prognosis, except perhaps in patients with advanced rheumatoid arthritis interstitial lung disease, is much better than, say, a patient with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. And so for those reasons, it's especially important to recognize that an autoimmune or connective tissue disease is causing the interstitial lung disease. So patients who have nonspecific interstitial pneumonitis, and that can be a more inflammatory process with ground glass opacities, or a bit more fibrotic with traction bronchiectasis and reticulation, are often uh, have that due to an autoimmune or connective tissue disease. And so in patients whose CT scan is thought to be characteristic of NSIP, we should be looking very carefully, both clinically and serologically, for evidence for an autoimmune disease. And in fact, those patients should be referred to a rheumatologist for their expert opinion so that we can truly make a multidisciplinary diagnosis. In addition, patients can have organizing pneumonia, which is a very inflammatory process in the lung, and that too is a sign that we might be dealing with an autoimmune or connective tissue disease. So there are two well-done trials in patients with systemic sclerosis or scleroderma and interstitial lung disease. And in patients who had more than mild disease in the scleroderma 2 lung study, they were randomized to receive either the immunosuppressant cyclophosphamide or mycophenolate mofetil or salsept. In patients in both arms of the study, the vital capacity showed modest but real improvement. And in the patients who received mycophenolate mofetil, there was no further decline in the diffusing capacity. Now this study built on the scleroderma 1 study that had shown cyclophosphamide was better than placebo. 
What's exciting about this study is that mycophenolate mofetil, which has been used off-label to treat autoimmune or connective tissue interstitial lung disease in other forms like uh, rheumatoid arthritis um, or patients with autoimmune myositis, is very well tolerated. And so this could be a real advance for patients, patients with systemic sclerosis and interstitial lung disease.